has his help. Damn Skippy, 75% faster, three times as fast. And what's even more important is the stability is so much better. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for once again joining me for tea time today. We have a little bit of misty morning. That zing, it's so good, so good guys. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee. Today we're gonna to be talking about Starlink. Starlink has been blowing up. People just love this stuff. So I'm trying to give you as much of it as possible. And the information I give you in this video, I have not seen on the web anywhere. All right. So if you get value from this and it does help you as it has helped me, please, please share it with your friends, family, colleagues, any kind of Reddit or forums or wherever. Let's get this information out to everyone because this can definitely improve your experience using Starlink. Once again, it will lower your latency and the side effect of that will be faster speeds as well as better reliability, more stability. And that's what we're looking for when it comes to Starlink. I also wanna make it clear that this information will help everyone with Starlink. It doesn't matter if you have a generation one Starlink or a gen two, or it's in the future and you have a gen three, a gen four, it doesn't matter, this will help you. Now, before I get into it, I wanna do a little bit of housekeeping. If you're brand new to the channel, you don't know who the hell I am. I'm Joseph Christina, I'm a DP, I'm a photographer, I'm also an inventor and I've worked as a system administrator in the past. As an inventor, I've made a lot of tools over the years for photo and video. I've created the Focus Pyramid Autofocus Lens Calibration Tool, the PRT, which is a photo reference tool for getting your color just right. Also, I created the Aurora Camera Care products, an entire line of cleaning your sensors as well as cleaning your lenses effectively, cheaply, but safely. So if you want to take a look at any of my products, you can find them over on Amazon, you can find them on B&H Photo and Video, or you can head over to my website, jchristina.com. Also, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. You can go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books, you get them for free. Go check it out. So let's get right into it. Now, first, I want to clear something up from one of my last Starlink videos. I was talking to you guys about how I felt that we were being throttled. And once the premium service came out or was announced, there was some type of throttling going on. Our speeds were cut in half. There was a lot of people coming after me with a lot of negativity. You know, why are you saying bad things about Starlink? And maybe you should just cancel your service and on and on and on. Basically, what I was providing was facts and my commentary, giving you the ability to make a decision for yourself. I showed you exactly how the connections were before and then after. So it was pretty much black and white. What the reasoning was, I was speculating in my commentary that I felt that there was some type of throttling going on. So keep in mind, I am not a shill. I am not a fanboy. I am not someone that is biased to one company or next. So if you are new, now you know it. You look at any of my 700 videos, you'll see that I am unbiased. Everything that I talk about has nothing to do with an affiliation with some company. I do not run this channel that way. Now, so what I did is I reached out to Starlink, to the people over there at SpaceX, and I questioned them, and now I'm gonna tell you what their response was. On February 2nd, I got a message from a guy named Brady. He says, hello, Joseph. Current Starlink user speeds will not be impacted by the release of Starlink Premium. As we develop and improve the network, there will be expected fluctuations in speed. So I always like to get two people to confirm this from a company because you don't know, maybe this guy is new, who knows? So I wrote back and said, thank you, Brady. So I just want to be perfectly clear. There is no throttling happening and the halving of my speeds that I am currently seeing is due to network development issues. Correct? Question mark. Thank you. Two days later, I get a message from Tony different guy. That's good. That's what I wanted to see. Tony says, hi, Joseph. That is correct. There is no throttling to your speeds and any speed fluctuation you see is due to network development. Please feel free to reach back out with any further questions or concerns. So there you have it. According to SpaceX or Starlink representatives over there, there is no throttling going on. 
That's what they say. So you have to take them for their word. That's what they're saying. Now, is that the mantra or is that the marching orders that are provided by the company for the text to say? It could be. Was the speeds reduced by half? Yes, you saw it in black and white. So what the reasoning is, I don't know. But we did increase our speeds and that's what we're gonna get into right now. And I'm gonna show you how I did it. Once again, I have not seen this anywhere else on the web, not on any forum and not on YouTube anywhere. So once again, if you get some value from this, please share this video. Now, this video has everything to do with latency. And by lowering latency, the side effect is improved speeds as well as better stability and reliability. And that's what we're going for here. Bettering our experience with Starlink. Some people like to game with Starlink. And if you do, the latency that I'm getting right now, you can. So let's get right into it. Now, I'm gonna tell you the how and the why instead of just how to do it. This video is gonna run a little bit longer. I apologize for that, but I wanna teach you something, not just tell you how to do it. You, I want you to know why you're doing it, okay? I think that's very, very important. I've done this with photography, videography, everything that I do. I like to give the how and the why. So starting out with is latency. What is latency and how does it make a difference, all right? So latency is basically the amount of time it takes for you to send out a packet to a server and that server to acknowledge that data and send a return or acknowledgement or an ACK packet back to you. That is your latency. Latency is measured in milliseconds. How many milliseconds does it take to say ping, pong, ping, Pong, and that is the analogy that I used in one of my previous videos. When you ping out to a specific location, to a server, it shows you how many milliseconds it takes for that ping to be ponged back to you. The lower that number, the better it is, okay, period. That is latency. Now there's a lot of things that go into this latency or how many milliseconds it takes for that ping pong to happen, for those pings to come back to you. And one of the biggest things is how many hops does it take to get to the server that you're trying to get to? So a hop is basically the number of stops so to speak, that it takes for your data to get from one place to the other place. So, for example, if I was to ping 8.8.8.8, which is Google's DNS server, from me right now, it takes five hops, five IP addresses to get there if I do a trace route. So also, if I was to ping a server in Virginia, for example, it's gonna most likely, if all things equal, take more hops for it to get to Virginia and then come back in comparison to if I was pinging a server here in West Palm Beach. Why? Geographical distance does factor into the number of hops for the most part. You can get into backbones and fiber and a lot of other stuff, but for the most part, just understand if the server you're trying to go to is further away from you, it's going to take longer for that information to come back to you because there's a lot of hops or a lot of servers that have to take that data and relay it off until it gets back to you. So this is why all big businesses or major corporations always want to geographically locate themselves close to the internet backbones those hubs, those main central points where they can get their data onto the network as quickly as possible. So what is a backbone? Basically a backbone is usually run by like a third party, sometimes even nonprofits, so that they don't have any skin in the game, so to speak. And they are the ones that facilitate this peer-to-peer -peer communication between ISP, backbone ISPs. So communication can happen between ISPs through the backbone backbone via fiber optic cables, but literally peer to peer. So in short, these backbones are basically like a 1950s phone operator. Let's say John calls up the operator and says, I want to place a call to Joseph Christina. And so the operator will look it up and say, oh, Joseph Christina's on trunk 42. So she will take John, plug him in over here, take the wire and plug it into 42. And now there's a peer to peer connection from John to Joe and they can communicate together. That's the exact same thing that these backbones do in essence. All right. So being close to them 
is very, very powerful. Now, when I first set up Starlink, I was using a website called satellitemap.space. And I've talked to you guys about it, and I even showed some of the footage of me using it in one of my past videos. That's a really nice piece of software. It is web-based. You just log in, you go to satellitemaps.space, and now you can see the procession of all of the Starlink satellites, where they are, which satellites are going in and out of your location. It will also show you where the ground stations are and finally the pops, basically those point of presence, those locations, I call them NOx or network operation centers. Now, in the entire country, there's only nine NOx or nine pops that Starlink currently has in operation, but they have a lot of ground stations. Now, there is a difference. So let's make believe I'm doing a Google search. Your request then goes out to your dish and then up to a satellite. From the satellite, it would come back down to one of your local ground stations. And then via fiber optics, that request is sent from the ground station to the POP. The POP sends that request to Google and Google will reply. Once the POP gets the reply, the POP sends the response back to your local ground station and then your local ground station sends it back up to the satellite and the satellite sends it back down to you. So how much latency is really attributed to communicating with the satellites? Not as much as you think, I bet. So if these satellites are up at, let's say 500, 550 kilometers, the amount of time it takes for me to send data from my dish up to one is 1 1.8 milliseconds. So up and down, up and down four times, right? It is under eight milliseconds. That is it. The majority of the latency happens on the ground and that's what we're trying to minimize. Now, one of the subscribers, a really nice guy, his name is Glenn Kozlcheck, I believe. I probably butchered his last name, I'm sorry. He sent me over a link to another application, another web resource, and I tried using that. So instead of using the satellite maps.space, I used this new one that he sent me, and it's called starlink.sx. So I'll probably put it right here. This is very important, you need to know this. I'll put it in the comments, I'll put it in the description, starlink.sx. It's very similar to the satellite map.space, but it gives you additional information. And some of this information is what you will need to increase your speed, all right? So we need to go to starlink.sx. Now, what do you find there? What is the majority of the stuff? Now, of course, you'll find the direction of where the satellites are moving to and from in real time. You see that. But what's more important is number one, there's a green dot to your location. You get to put that green dot wherever you are located. All right. So you put that green dot there. Then there's yellow dots. Those yellow dots are your ground stations. And you can see where those ground stations are in a proximity to you which is very good. Next, you'll see purple triangles. As of today, the time of recording this video, there is nine of them. All of these triangles are POPs, as I call them NOx or network operation centers, those hubs, the backbones, let's call them. And then finally, there's a green triangle. All right, so there's nine altogether. There'll be eight triangles that are purple and you'll see one triangle that is green. That is the pop that is associated with your IP address. And that's what is so important for us to see where that pop is, where that green triangle is in proximity to you. Now, what I found out when I looked at this confirmed what I knew from before when I said that there was something going on here. Well, anytime that I would do any type of speed test from the very beginning, it always would say that my IP is located in Virginia and I'm not in Ashburn, Virginia. I'm in Florida. Well, this confirmed it. Where was the green triangle? Exactly. Ashburn, Virginia. I'm in South Florida. Well, when I look on the map, as you guys can see, now there's a green triangle there. When you look on the map, there's also a pop, or like I call it, a network operations center in Miami. So what did I do? I wrote to Starlink another message. And what I said was basically this. I'm thinking an issue with speed and latency may be the fact that the pop that I'm connected to is in Ashburn, Virginia, 1,018 miles away from my location in South Florida. Now, there is a pop in Miami, which is only 80 miles from me. 
Wouldn't it make more sense to route through the pop 80 miles away instead of the one that's 1,018 miles away? Thank you very much. Sincerely, me. Guess what? Less than 24 hours later, I come into the studio. I go into speedtest.net, just like I always do. I do. I'm constantly doing these tests so I can report back to you, unbiased, literally, here it is. Guess what? Miami is where it's coming up as my IP. I look at my IP, it's completely different than where it was yesterday. Sure enough, my pop is now in Miami, 80 miles away. Now, has this helped? Damn skippy. My pings used to be anywhere from about, let's call it 50 milliseconds to about 75 milliseconds. On average, 55, 60 milliseconds. That's where my pings usually were, sometimes up to 100. My latency, as we call it, my pings. What are they now? 20. That's right. 75% faster. 20 compared to, let's say, 60. Three times as fast. And what's even more important is the stability is so much better. I see 20 milliseconds and it constantly fluctuates 20, 22, 28, 22, 25, 28, somewhere right on there. I almost never see 30. It's stable now. Before, it would be like every once in a while, it would hit a low of like 47. Then it would be like 55, 62, 75, 69, all over the damn place. The question you would ask is, why is that? Hops. Once again, hops. The number of hops that it takes for the ground station to send the request to the POP or the network operation or the backbone is a hell of a lot more to get from the ground station in South Florida all the way up to Virginia in comparison to the ground station only 80 miles away. That's it. Just like I said before, the latency comes from the ground. The latency is not coming from the air. These are LEO satellites, low earth orbiting satellites, only about 500 kilometers away or so. They're they're really low. It takes no time to reach them with data. Like I said, 1.8 milliseconds to get data from the top of my roof to the satellite. That is it. Very quick. So to put a bow around this, go to starlink.sx. Go check it out. Look where all of those purple triangles are and look where the green triangle is. Then put a green dot exactly at your location and then measure how far away the pop or the green triangle is to you in comparison to the purple triangles. If you have a purple triangle closer to you than your green triangle, contact Starlink, let them know, and they will move you to a closer pop and you will be guaranteed to get lower latency, better reliability, definitely better stability, and possibly even slightly faster speeds. These are my preliminary results. I just got this and I'm sharing it with you immediately, so I'm gonna be doing more tests and I will let you know how much of a difference changing from one pop to the other is in, let's say, a week or so. So if you have found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. That would be very, very helpful. And as I said before, share it with your friends and family and colleagues, maybe on a Reddit page or maybe a forum, maybe a Starlink forum that you're on. Anyone that has Starlink or is looking on purchasing Starlink, share this channel with them. I've also put together a playlist just for Starlink. So if you don't want to see any of my camera stuff or video or whatever and just Starlink, head over to the Starlink playlist and you can watch it all there. Finally, if you have not subscribed to the channel as of yet, please subscribe. There's over 700 videos over here. There's a lot. I put together a lot of good content and it's always unbiased. It's very important to me. Click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Love you all. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.